So today we're going to talk about Pedro Paramo by the Mexican writer Juan Rulfo. Pedro Paramo is one of the best novels ever written in Spanish. It was first published in 1955 and has since then been translated into English and many other languages. But let's begin by talking a little bit about its author Juan Rulfo. Now, Juan Rulfo is a giant, a capital name in Latin American and world literature. He's simply one of the most fascinating writers of the 20th century. And the best way for you to find out why he's attained that status is to pick up Pedro Paramo. Now, Juan Rulfo was born in 1917, so just at the very end of the Mexican Revolution. Now, historians roughly date the Mexican Revolution between 1910 and 1920. Rulfo was born in Jalisco, which is on the Pacific coast of Mexico. He's parents died when he was young, uh, he was still a child, so he was raised by his grandmother and I think uh, some of his other relatives as well. Rulfo became a writer in the 1940s and his main preoccupation was to write about Mexico and its reality in new uh, and explored ways. Initially, Rulfo mainly wrote short stories and in 1953 he published all his short stories in a volume entitled El Llano en Llamas, which has been translated into English as The Burning Plain, The Plain in Flames, and El Llano in Flames. In that collection and in the other two books that followed it, including, well, the other two books that followed it were Pedro Paramo and The Golden Cockerel and other stories, Rulfo essentially wrote about Mexico. But Make no mistake, Juan Rulfo is a universal writer. His writing will speak to you no matter what your background is. You don't even need to know the next thing about Mexico to enjoy his books. Don't think that. Now, when I say that Rulfo writes about Mexico, I don't just mean that he sets his stories in Mexico. Mexicanness in his writing goes a lot deeper than that. There's the geography for sure, there's the themes, and he uses orality, how the Mexican people talk and tell stories. All of that is in his short stories and in his only novel, Pedro Paramo. Now, just to give you an idea what to expect from Rulfo's writing if you're new to it, he uses similar narrative techniques to William Faulkner or James Joyce. That's the kind of thing that you can expect, but Rulfo is no imitator. Now, Mexico is a giant, it's a huge, diverse country, but Rulfo focuses on an extremely specific part of Mexico. He describes the dry, hot plains. And there is also a subtle social-political critique in his writing, but nothing explicit. He didn't write pamphlets, thankfully. So what is the political perspective that we get in the short stories and in the novel Pedro Paramo? Well, Rulfo writes about Mexico in the post-revolutionary era. The Mexican Revolution was full of promise, but many of those promises went unfulfilled, and that is particularly painful in rural Mexico, in the Mexico that Rulfo writes about. That's his literary universe, a backward place peopled by tragic, miserable figures where superstition, corruption, illiteracy, and violence, often violent within families run rampant. That's the Mexico Rulfo writes about. Now, Pedro Paramo is, as I say, his only novel, and it is quite a short novel, as you can see. The plot is very simple. After the death of his mother, a man called Juan Preciado travels to the town of Comala to meet his father for the first time. But when he arrives there, he finds out that Comala is a ghost town. Literally, Comala is a town inhabited by ghosts. At the onset, the novel seems very traditional, a man who goes in search of his father. That seems like perhaps a promising start to a conventional novel. But very soon into the book, very early into the book, the reader finds out that that is not what she's going to get. Pedro Paramo is a fascinating text, but it is also disorienting. The title is evocative for Spanish speakers, but English readers might not get it, so let me explain the significance of the title. Okay, so the name Pedro, uh, Peter in English, comes from the Latin word for stone, which is Petrus, and Paramo is Spanish for desert or wasteland. So Pedro Paramo, the name of the narrator's father, means stone desert or stone wasteland. Let me also explain the symbology of the name of the fictional town Comala. Comala derives from the word comal, which is the name of that flat griddle used to cook tortillas and other similar foods. So, the name of the town evokes both flatness, dryness, um, and stifling heat. 
Okay, that's three things. Um, and that is the atmosphere the narrator Juan Preciado encounters in Pedro Paramo. Comala is so, in fact, is so unbearably hot that at some point in the novel it is described as worse than hell itself. One of the most fascinating aspects of Pedro Paramo the novel is that knowing as we do that its author Juan Rulfo was a well-read person who had a deep knowledge of Latin American and world, world literature, his writing style is extremely simple to the point that there aren't any direct references, much less citations, to the work of other writers in the novel. And that is one of the elements that makes Pedro Paramo so accessible. This novel is one of those books that are ostensibly simple. You might even read it and miss the point completely because of how it's written. Now, remember the importance of the oral tradition for Rulfo. Now, I said that he uses techniques similar to those deployed by Faulkner or Joyce, but I think Rulfo's writing is a lot more accessible than that of those two writers. Now, I'm sure most people who have read or tried to read novels by Faulkner or Joyce would not describe them as easy. I'm sure that even readers who love Faulkner or Joyce wouldn't say that. Um, but the good news is that if you love Faulkner, I think you will also love Rulfo. And if you struggle with Faulkner, you might find Rulfo a lot more accessible. But that is not to say that this novel, Pedro Paramo, is an easy read. It is not. Uh, what Rulfo does in his um, in, in his novel, Pedro Paramo, is unique. At least I've never read anything else like it. Now, the backdrop of Pedro Paramo is, as I say, the extremely hot plains of Mexico, sparsely populated by poor, lonely people. The paradox of Pedro Paramo is that it is a short novel that you could read in one sitting, but it is also an endless book. Um, and by that I mean that it's the kind of novel that you could read time and time again and you are always going to find something new in it. It is almost like reading a new book every time because there is a myriad of possible readings that could be made of it. Now, one of the most appealing aspects of the novel is its nostalgia. This is a profoundly nostalgic piece of writing. Comala, as Juan Preciado's uh, mother used to describe it to him when he was younger, no longer exists when he actually gets there. The town has changed so much that it is almost the exact opposite of what Juan's mother told him it would be like, or what he expected it to be like. Now, I don't like to assume that people watching my reviews have necessarily re uh, read the books I discuss, so I won't go any deeper into how this novel manages to be so nostalgic in other ways, because I don't want to spoil anything. Although, what I am trying to avoid uh, talking about is something that the reader finds out in the first few pages of the novel. But anyway, if you have read Pedro Paramo, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't read it and want to find out, all you need to do is pick it up and you'll find out in the first few pages. By the way, I've linked uh, to different editions of the novel in English and Spanish in the description box for this video. Now, <laughs> Pedro Paramo is also an elliptical text. There are many gaps that the reader would need to fill in herself. Uh, that's why there can be so many different readings of this novel. But there is an explanation for all the gaps. Now, the original manuscript, uh, as I understand it, was a lot longer than the final novel, which is quite short. Now, once um, Juan Rulfo had finished writing the novel, he cut out a lot, leaving only the bare bones to the story. And reading Pedro Paramo, I would say that he did the right thing because those gaps, that elliptical quality uh, in the text is one of the aspects that makes this book one of the greatest novels ever written. But this is also what makes the novel so disorienting, as I said earlier. Now, Juan Preciado is the main narrator, but there are also other voices in the novel. It can often be hard to work out who's talking, and that is why I suggest you take your time with Pedro Paramo. You might make the mistake of rushing through it just because it is such a short and ostensibly simple novel, but you would be better off either slowing down the pace or rereading the novel. And by rereading the novel, I don't necessarily mean reading the whole novel and then going back to the beginning, but rather rereading anything, any fragment that you find confusing or disorienting before you proceed with the rest of the novel.
Now, all those voices, that polyphony, the profusion of voices from different times, is what reveals uh, that this ostensibly simple narrative seeks to portray a complex reality. Now, if you have been paying close attention to this review, and I'm sure you have, you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned the word character even once. And that is because I think it is very hard to talk about characters in Pedro Paramo. All we have are voices, not fully fledged characters as such. And, um, you know, to the point that sometimes it is impossible for the reader to attach a voice to a character. So please don't try to find out who is talking every single time because very often that is not possible and you're just going to drive yourself crazy. Now, another reason to read Pedro Paramo is that it is a hugely influential novel. For instance, Gabriel García Márquez acknowledged the profound influence this novel had on his writing, particularly on his novel 100 Years of Solitude. Pedro Paramo is a challenging book, and it is a book that gets more complex the more you read it. It doesn't get easier, it gets more complex, but also more enjoyable, I think. There is so much more to say about this novel. I could talk about it for hours and hours and never get close to what makes it so great. You know, there's so many things I haven't talked about. I haven't talked about the role of organized religion, for example, which in this case uh, is represented by a Catholic priest. So the organized religion is um, Roman Catholicism. And here is represented by the corrupted priest, uh, Father Renteria. I also haven't talked about the black humor that permeates parts of the novel. There's so much more I could talk about. But do let me know your thoughts, whether you have read Pedro Paramo or not. I'd love to hear from you. That's all from me for now. I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you will join me again very soon for another book review. Take care and bye for now.